I usually turn to books to get some strength when I'm feeling not so great. And a book that I'd like to share with you all that has given me a lot of that strength is this book, uh, Subjective Atlas of Palestine. And it was published in 2007 when I was first starting to do my research about Palestine's borders, which had me looking at a lot of maps. So I was so excited to see this entire compilation out that same year because it has maps, but it has a lot more than just maps. It, and it's an atlas, so um, it, it, it talks to you in greater description about Palestine. But because it's subjective, it's more from below, from the everyday life, from, from, from people, from communities. It gives you that view of Palestine rather than the Palestine from above, which is the, you know, just that abstract map. And it does have maps. It has that abstract map from 1923 when Palestine's borders were cut. Um, different variations. And it also has... Um, more contemporary variations with the fragmentation taking place throughout all of Palestine. And then there's more fragmentation on the next page. And this one here, I love this one. It shows so many artistic renderings and the tic-tac-toe one on the bottom corner is one of my most memorable because I kept thinking about that as, wow, it really kind of is that way when it comes to mapping the world since 1492, all this cutting up of borders and claiming territory and, you know, and I love this one so much, the one on the bottom right here by Ines Yassin. It has an above and a below which is the epitome of Israel-Palestine. And that line between the above and the below is the border between Israel-Palestine. And in fact, you see this on the more everyday life level, in particular in the West Bank, you see this, this reality of um, Israeli society and Palestinian society like warming around each other so that they don't have to see each other. And, um, literally too, not just metaphorically above and below. If you go to Hebron in Hebron, that's a really hard place to visit. You see it right there. Uh, settlers have taken over the above floors of Palestinian buildings and throw trash down at Palestinians and urine. Really disgusting. And as you're walking on, on those roads, you look above you and there's nets that Palestinians have put up to catch the trash so it doesn't hit them on the head. <sighs> That's literally above and below in Hebron, in the West Bank. And um, that map just to me, just <laughs> that's the true map of Israel-Palestine. And other things about this that I love, um, you know, there's, you know, events calendar going on. <laughs> events going on in Palestine. It's largely in, in, in uh, Jerusalem and other parts of the West Bank like Ramallah and uh, Bethlehem and Hebron, Nablus, Janine. Yeah, shout out. Shout out to Nablus and Janine. Of course, Bethlehem. Um, you know, cartoons, uh, sarcastic political cartoons. There's also, you know, news. Uh, Palestinians reading newspapers. So this is 2007. Um, and this was the same year that the smartphone came out. So <laughs> I don't know if these are still the scenes as much in Palestine, especially today. Um, I love this one. I remember it so much. 12 ways to eat chickpeas. And it's number 10 that most of the world knows. But pals, it's just the hummus that we know. But all of this is hummus too. It's just different hummus. Hummus plates. Different hummuses. Here's the uh, hagile, the water pipe. And 
<laughs> I mean, this is serious everyday life. It's the sense of the argile. Here's the smoke. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a really heartwarming book. There's everyday life in, in Gaza, children trying to play in the prison that is Gaza. It's 2007. The world's largest prison. Even then, Palestinian tiles. Oh, I love this part. This is the clothes and the embroidery, which is so magnificent. And the flowers. Oh, the landscape. Mm. Oof, oof. The occupation. There's a sniper tower, the apartheid wall in Palestinian home. Oh, so creepy, so disgusting. There are also, um, this is really interesting, documents that I need to travel outside Palestine. So the PA passport, Palestinian Authority passport, the Canadian passport, the Jordanian passport, and then there's the Hawiya, the Palestinian ID, and then all of these other visas and bus tickets or just to travel outside of Palestine. Oh, the British passport that says Palestine from before Israel existed. Um, just everyday life. And something that's one of my favorite things about it is the, the letters from the prisoners uh, to their parents. Um, and then there's a really beautiful one um, to a prisoner from his wife. It's very, it's such a beautiful letter. Um, in the name of God, my dear and respected husband, Abu Salah, I am waiting to be united with you one day, even if there were no more days left in my life. Your wife, Haida. There's no news from Palestine. No news, just people chilling. Nothing's happening. Nothing even at this table is happening. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> and then different flags. And this is the first time I ever heard of the, um, of the Palestinian flag, the watermelon from Khalid Hurani. Flags that are, you know, barbed wire and more fragmentation. This one's separation. One black flag, one white flag, one green flag, one red flag. More barbed wire. I remember when we were at UNC doing Palestine awareness in, at around this time, 2008, we had a huge week, it was really nice. We used some of this artwork in our materials. I'll try to dig one up. And it was really nice because, you know, the artists were really cool with it and so was the creator of the atlas and then the artist. 